Hey guys, so this week's lab is going to be a, a little bit different. Um, we are going to be using this iBook. It's technically it's just a PDF that I had made a while back to help teach us how to draw the brachial plexus. So that's that's today's goal. I'm going to have this posted here probably in the next hour or so. And it will be probably a 30 or 40 minute video on how to draw the brachial plexus. And at the end, my hope is that you will be able to draw and label the brachial plexus from memory. Okay, that's my goal. Um, why? Why bother? You might be wondering. We have not drawn things before in this class. And the brachial plexus is just one of these things that has developed like a, a mythical reputation in anatomy. Many of you may have never heard of it. Some of you may have had friends who took anatomy and they told you, oh my goodness, you wouldn't believe this crazy thing I'm learning. It's the brachial plexus. If you go on YouTube, you'll find uh, songs to memorize it, um, you know, dances, raps, drawings, there's all kinds of stuff. It's not really that bad. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm, I'm here to tell you it's not quite as intimidating as you may have been led to believe. And if you haven't been led to believe that, then perfect. Don't worry about it. It's not too big of a deal. What is it? What is this mysterious thing called the brachial plexus? Well, it's simply all the nerves of your upper extremity and really, you know, of your upper quarter because it includes a lot of nerves that innervate muscles of your shoulder, you know, your deltoids, your trapezius, get branches, um, your subclavius, um, dorsal scapular. Those are really nerve roots. So no, it's tough. It's tough. It's, it's kind of a gray area. But so probably the simplest way to describe it would be all of the nerves that innervate your upper extremity. So sensory and motor. And we're going to draw it. We're going to draw the nerves that innervate your upper extremity. And you might think, well, draw, what does that mean? It's, we're not trying to draw an anatomical likeness. We're trying to draw a structure. So um, say you were on a game show, you know, the amazing race, something like that. And you had to get across the country in a car, but you weren't allowed to use, you know, navigation on your phone or a map or a GPS. They just said, here's a map. You have an hour or two, however long, to memorize it, to memorize your route, and then you need to go. Well, you, I mean, that's maybe doable, depending on how complicated the route is. So what you would do is you'd look at the map, you'd try to maybe either write down the steps or draw it and try to commit that image to memory. And then at the end, you have to give all that material back, and hopefully you memorize it, and hopefully you can get there. That's the same idea here, because if you were to look at a cadaver in lab, which I'm, I'm hoping to bring you guys in to look. I know it's kind of a weird situation right now. Um, but if you were to look at a cadaver in lab, or even if you were looking at uh, an app, you know, a 3D model, all of the nerves look more or less the same. They're not like the muscles or the bones where they have very clear cut shapes and locations. The nerves all sort of look like spaghetti noodles. Some look like bigger spaghetti noodles, some look a little bit more like linguine, but the point is they're all the same color, they all have the same texture, and they all can move around. They, you know, in the body, they're embedded in fat, so they don't move around, but once we remove all that fat in a cadaver, they can sort of move around and it gets tough. So what you need to do is you need to memorize where they split, where they converge, where they diverge. Um, that type of thing. And that is the point of drawing the brachial plexus. So if you go to anponline.com, go to the anatomy lab button. Uh, we do have brachial plex plexus lab notes. I prefer this. Since we're not actually going into the lab, use whatever you want, look at both. I like this because you can just run through this and practice drawing the brachial plexus. This is if you wanted to get a little bit more artistic, you could draw a brachial plexus like this. This is a right brachial plexus. And this drawing technically ends um, right about like, uh, I want to say the humeral head area, maybe a little bit farther, anatomical neck, mid shaft of the humerus. So there's still a lot of upper extremity left. Um, but this is, this is really, when we say brachial plexus, this is what we mean. Because these nerves just continue on all the way down into the hand. The median nerve, the radial nerve, and the ulnar nerve go all the way down. Radial nerve changes a little bit on the way, but 
basically this captures 99% of the nervous structures of the upper extremity. So this is a little bit more artistic. This is a right. Um, this is how we'll probably be practicing drawing it. This would be a left brachial plexus. And the idea is if you're looking at a spaghetti noodle in lab right here, and it's right by the neck, okay? And you know that these roots come directly off the spinal cord. So you can find this nerve root and this nerve root coming together and you know that that structure is the superior trunk because you have this drawing memorized, you call it the superior trunk. If you've only learned on the cadaver, you start looking to recognize what the nerve looks like and nerves look different on different cadavers. You need to memorize the map. The map is very important. It remains to be seen how important it will be for our class, since we're all online now, I think this will still be very helpful even when looking at the 3D model, because even the 3D model is still very confusing without this basic understanding. So I'm not going to go through these 20 pages. I encourage you to. It kind of gives you a step-by-step -step how to draw the brachial plexus. We're just actually going to do that ourselves. We're going to draw the brachial plexus together. So I'll probably post this video first, and then uh, either tonight or tomorrow I'll have the 3D version up. Um, I still need to write a quiz for you guys for tonight, so just kind of stay on top of the announcements these next few days. There will be lots of, of lots of stuff coming out, so um, let's let's focus on one thing at a time and just focus on drawing the brachial plexus and then practicing it. So I'm drawing some letters and some numbers. Why you might ask? These are uh, these represent spinal nerves. So these are nerves that come directly off the spinal cord. You have 31 pairs of these. We're just talking about these five because these five spinal nerves send all of the motor information to our arm and receive all the sensory information from our arm. It all comes through these five. So we don't care about T2 or T3 for this. We're just talking about these because we're just talking about the brachial plexus. So we're going to draw what those nerves do. So C5 comes off the spinal cord and very quickly merges with C6, which does the same thing. And that may be one or two inches long right there if you're trying to get some scale. C7 just comes straight off the spinal cord. C8 and T1 merge just like C5 and C6. So if we were in lab looking at a cadaver, looking in between the scalene muscles, right on the side of the spinal cord, kind of, oh, it's always tender if you're ever rubbing the side of your neck there, and it might have a knot in it because you've been sitting in front of a computer for too long. Right there, that area, you would find these, okay? I, I'm acting like you can see me. I'm touching the side of my neck. <laughs> but, but anyway, it's the side of your neck. This, this is all here. Buried in muscle and fat, and you, of course, but in a cadaver, you could see it. Those are called nerve roots. They're also called spinal nerves. You can say either. For some reason, specifically when we're talking about the brachial plexus, I see these called nerve roots more often than spinal nerves. But in this case, they're synonyms. So C5 nerve root, C6 nerve root, C7 nerve root, C8 nerve root, you get the idea. Those are the roots. I'm drawing these in different colors, but I mean, anatomically and histologically, this is identical. Um, we're just a little bit farther down stream, and we call these trunks. Again, maybe one or two inches long. Just depends. There's a lot of variation on nerves and cadavers. So these are trunks, and they are called, ooh, my kindergarten writing here, um, superior trunk. I hope you're you're coloring along with me. Grab a grab a paper if you haven't already. Middle trunk and inferior trunk. Okay, superior, middle, and inferior trunk. Then after that, we have something called divisions. Divisions confuse people. Um, they're almost always hidden by the clavicle in a cadaver. So a lot of times we'll remove one clavicle and one of the cadavers. Um, we're not going to be doing that, obviously, because we're doing this online, so I'll do my best to explain, and we'll probably be able to see it really well on the app, because we can just remove the clavicle in the app. So here we are. Oh, and you know what? I 
I should have actually covered that instead of because this lies on top of the yellow. Using different colors kind of helps a little bit. So what have I just drawn? Well, I've drawn a branch. Uh, I'm sorry. Let's start. Let's start up top. The superior trunk splits into two divisions: an anterior division and a posterior division. The posterior division dives backwards. This might be an inch long. Then it goes towards the back of your arm. And eventually we're going to have nerves running down the back of your arm and nerves running down the front of the arm. The division occurs here. And that's why we call this region the divisions. Okay, so superior trunk splits up into an anterior and posterior division. The middle trunk does the exact same thing. It splits into a posterior division and an anterior division. So this anterior division is actually lying on top of this posterior division. And then the inferior trunk does the same thing as well. So each trunk splits into an anterior and posterior division. Okay, boom. The posterior divisions all come together. The anterior divisions are arranged a little differently, but I think you get the idea there. It's split from being in one plane to being in two. There's a posterior and an anterior component now. So let's draw the next section, which are called the chords. We have a lateral chord. I really should have drawn these poster divisions <laughs> meeting right there, but that's okay. Sorry, that was a lateral chord, this is a posterior chord, and this is a medial chord. So we have three chords. So let's label lateral, posterior, medial. So I wonder if you've noticed something. This lateral chord looks like it's oriented in the exact same way as the superior trunk. And the medial looks like it's oriented just like the inferior, and the posterior looks like it's oriented just like the middle. So why the name change? Well, somewhere in here, in this region, the brachial plexus has now turned from coming out of your neck sideways to going down your arm. So now what used to be superior, because this is continuous, right? We've now turned down the shoulder and it's become lateral. So when we draw it like this, we're kind of assuming that someone's arm is sticking out. Um, like if you were gonna make a T with your hands, like stick both of your arms straight out at 90 degrees, we're kind of assuming that's the orientation here when we draw it like this. If you wanted, you could draw it turning down the arm and a lot of people do. It's just simpler to do it this way, and we're kind of limited on, on space. So um, you can look at, you can Google pictures online. Just make sure that they're covering the same structures we're covering and that we're calling this things the same name. I don't want you to miss a point because of something like that. But All right, and then this next section is by far the most difficult branches. These are the terminal branches of the brachial plexus that actually innervate muscle or sensory receptors. Okay, so oops, it can't accommodate 200 items on a slide. Sorry. Um, oh, this is terrible. Microsoft PowerPoint is giving me trouble. Oh no, I think, um, okay, so I'm going to erase all this stuff up here, and we should be good. But you remember what they are, and you put them on your paper. So it's roots, trunks, cords, divisions, and, I'm sorry, roots, trunks, divisions, cords, and branches. And there's a saying, it's Randy Travis drinks cold beverages, if that helps you remember. Randy Travis drinks cold beverages. Roots, trunks, divisions, cords, branches. Okay, so let's draw those branches. 
here we have the muscul musculo oh no let me draw it oh boy what's going on oh. okay here's what we're going to do check this out we're just going to draw a very basic brachial plexus and hopefully it doesn't give us any trouble this is good practice anyway too you can see it in a little bit faster speed now so trunk division trunk division trunk division and then you draw your posteriors your anteriors your cords all right, now we're at branches. So we're gonna draw branches right here. So just to recap, we just we just drew this really fast. <laughs> same idea, right? Does it look the same to you? Kind of takes a few looks. It's a, it's the same. I'm just double checking. It's the same. It is. Okay. So now we're gonna draw the branches. So this first branch here. Is called the musculocutaneous nerve. This branch is called the radial nerve, and this is the ulnar nerve. And then something kind of crazy happens. So let's say the branches start right there. We get a piece coming off of the um, lateral cord and a piece coming off the medial cord to form the median nerve. That is the median nerve right there. So just a quick recap, musculocutaneous, median, ulnar. This forms something called the M. The M is the saving grace of anatomy students everywhere because you walk up to a cadaver and you just see a mess of spaghetti noodle nerves in the axilla and the upper arm. And you don't recognize anything. So even if you have this map memorized, you don't have a starting point. You don't know where you are on the map. But then you see the structure that kind of looks like an M. The structure behind it, you actually can't see very well. It's buried. It goes back behind the arm. So you just see this beautiful M-like structure. And then you know where you are and you go, okay, I'm right here. But then maybe say this is tagged. But you know that's the lateral cord in your mental image of this map. So on the cadaver, you just follow this structure up and you go, oh, it's the lateral cord because I passed this division right here, uh, which we'll name in a second. I don't know if that made any sense to you, but the point is if you have the map memorized, you're like, I don't know where this is visually. But then you say, okay, but I know where I am here. I'm on the musculocutaneous nerve. I know this is the lateral head of the median nerve. So I'm above... I'm superior or medial, depending on the orientation of the body, where these two nerves split, that must mean I'm on the lateral cord. And you would be right and you'd get points and I'd be proud of you. Uh, but anyway, so, so those are our first three branches. This is the radial nerve. This is the lateral head of the median nerve. And this is the medial head of the median nerve. And that's it. Oh, wait. No, it's not, <laughs> because you see there are terminal branches all over the brachial plexus, not just at the end over here. So we need to draw those in. And I'm doing this from memory, so we'll have to confirm with my eye book that this is correct. But uh, we have one up here called dorsal scapular. Dorsal scapular nerve. Then we have a suprascapular nerve. Suprascapular and then we have a nerve to subclavius. These are all going to be fair game on the quiz and test. I know it seems overwhelming right now. It, it isn't. It will get better. We have a lateral pectoral nerve up here in the cord. We have a medial pectoral nerve down on the medial cord. So MP, LP. These next one you'll see drawn different ways. So we have a medial cutaneous nerve to the arm and a medial cutaneous nerve to the forearm. Sometimes you'll see them as one branch and it's called the medial cutaneous nerve to the arm and forearm. Different cadavers are different. There's no right way. Um, we'll see how the 3D model looks when we look at it in the next video.
Um, and then we have something called UTLA, which comes off the posterior cord. So this is a posterior cord right here. So we draw U, T, L, A. U, T, L, A. And there's all kinds of mnemonic devices about MMU and its rival UTLA. I don't. I think that just adds data. <laughs> I think it's just better to just focus on studying this. But it's up to you. Um, the U is upper subscapular nerve. The T is thoracodorsal nerve. L is lower subscapular nerve, and A is axillary nerve. Um, and then I think the last one, we'll have to double check, I could be wrong, is right here, and it gets a branch from 5, 6, and 7. So it gets a little piece of nerve root C5, nerve root C6, and nerve root C7, and it's called the long thoracic nerve. And I'm feeling like that's it. Let's look at our drawing here. Okay, so dorsal scapular, long thoracic, suprascapular, nerve to subclavius, lateral pectoral, UTLA. Um, this was, I'm blanking you guys, medial pectoral, medial cutaneous nerve to the arm, medial cutaneous nerve to the forearm. We have our median nerve heads, we have the median nerve, and we have MMU. We did it. We drew the brachial plexus, not too bad. Probably felt a little quick for you, so just go through here. It tells you draw these first, and then draw these, and then draw those, and then draw these, and then draw these. And just do it with your note. <laughs> it switches to Latin here. I think I uploaded an older version. Or maybe I don't even have a fully written out version. That's fine. You're just following the drawing steps, that's all. Um, so practice drawing it with help, then practice drawing it from memory, then practice labeling it with help, then practice labeling it from memory. You want to be able to label this, draw and label this from memory sooner rather than later. I'd make that one of your priorities. Um, and then once you get there, we're going to take it to the next level and apply that information you've learned to the 3D model. Thanks, guys.